Start with a clean work area. A sharp knife and a fish filleting glove will be necessary. We will be processing sockeye salmon. Start by cutting off any of the hard areas, the bone areas, the unedible sections. The smoker we will be using fits two sockeye salmon nicely. So preparing two salmon, cut away as I said all the hard unedible areas any of the tail sections, the dorsal fin, pectoral fins, adipose fin if necessary. With a sharp knife cut along the backbone on the top side of the backbone keeping the blade flat and slightly cutting upwards as you go very slightly. Work your way along the fish all the way back until you get to the tail section and there you have a nice fillet, the bone removed from one side. Now take your sharp knife, <laughs> the glove is necessary here, very important because you're cutting toward your hand. Take the sharp knife, cut just underneath the bone section, keeping your hand as flat as possible. If the knife slips, the glove will protect you. You will not cut yourself and that's the advantage of the glove. So cut flat again, slightly pulling up toward the bone as you slice along. Continuing to keep your hand flat. Always move your hand well back. When the blade does come to the end of the fish, it has a tendency to kick out and up, and that's where you want to have that glove protecting your wrist. Motion of the blade is across and slightly up. Once the bone is gone, very little meat on that, discard into the waste bin. Just remember to discard all of your fish pieces into a plastic bag and remove to the outside garbage quickly as it does start to smell in a very short period of time. Removing the dorsal fin and any of the bone or cartilage attached to it along the back side. Once you've got the fillet, cut it in half, thirds, quarters, whatever you choose. Nice clean fillet ready for brining. Do the same procedure with the rest of the fish. Again, taking off any fins, tails, things that are unedible. A nice clean fillet. Separate it again into halves, thirds, or quarters. The tail or caudal fin, make sure it's removed, and we repeat the procedure again, removing all of the hard sections of the fish. Again, this is the crucial part when cutting along the backbone. Again, your fingers are protected by the glove, but this cut is intended to try and get as much meat, get as close to the bone as possible, and that's why your blade is being held as flat as possible. Continue the cut right through to the end until it separates. Simply slice horizontally or flat again and take out that small bit of bone. Make 
extremely sharp knife is very handy. This blade could have been a little bit sharper for the procedure. Remove any loose sections of the viscera along the inside of the body cavity. A nice clean fillet, ready for cutting and ready for brining. Completely clean the glove afterwards. I like to run the glove through a dishwasher. Next is mixing the brine. We need to get out coarse salt and brown sugar. Equal parts of each is necessary. Again, coarse salt, pickling salt, commonly used. I usually use one cup of sugar, one cup of salt per fish. About that. These are smaller fish, so I'm using just a little bit less than a full cup. So two fish, two cups of salt, two fish, so two cups of brown sugar. This is not the Demerara sugar, this is the standard brown sugar. Demerara may be used. Brown is what I've always used. Some people use a little bit more sugar than salt if they like that sweeter flavor in the fish. Remember to reseal the bags of sugar and salt before putting it away. Thoroughly mix the sugar and salt together. Take out any lumps, break them up, so you've got a good combination of sugar and salt equally mixed together. Take a fillet, put it into a container, preferably plastic, not metal, not stainless steel. Plastic is better. Completely cover a fish fillet with brown sugar and salt. Be generous here. Continue to do this with each section of fillet until all the fillets are in with layers of sugar and salt on top of each section. Seal the container and place in the fridge. Brining is approximately 6 hours per maximum 1 inch of thickness of the fish. Please note that I'm starting my brine process at approximately 11 in the morning. So I expect to take this out around 5 to 6 p.m. A little bit longer if you like it saltier, a little bit shorter if you prefer it sweeter. Completely clean your work area when done. Prepare the smoker by removing any old used chips. Preload the smoker with apple. I prefer apple. You can use alder or a mixture. Put a heaping handful or two in the tray and place into the smoker. Do not plug it in yet. Wait for the fish to be loaded in, then plug in the smoker. Verify electrical connections do work before actually starting the smoking process, but don't leave the smoker plugged in at this time. The racks in the smoker should be coated in a vegetable oil spray. This allows easy removal of the fish once the fish has been smoked. I use a little chief smoker. Now approximately six we take the fish out of the fridge. You notice all of the liquid that's been pulled out of the fish from the salt. And now we go through the rinsing process. I was told many years ago you can't rinse the fish enough. One, two, maybe even three times. The initial first time is to remove the salt and then I might rinse it another two or three times after that with cold, clear water. Rinse all of the fish sections individually and then rinse them again, putting them back into a clean plastic container. Do them one piece at a time, doing both sides, rinsing off both the flesh and the skin side. Take longer than I have, 
I've speeded up the process for the sake of the video. Spend about 10 to 15 seconds on each section of the fish. Rinse thoroughly. Again, repeat two, possibly three times. Return the fish in the plastic container to the fridge if you don't plan on smoking right away. Notice the time is only 6 o'clock. 8 o'clock I take the fish out, I place it on the rack, I let it sit for about a half an hour, wait for the fish to become tacky. At approximately 8 to 9 p.m. I place the fish into the smoker. Again, this is a little chief smoker inside a cardboard box with some styrofoam liner to help insulate it during our cold fall evenings. This is allowed to the, the smoker to get up to a hot enough temperature. Again, remember to plug in the smoker, making sure we've got a good tight connection. After about an hour, hour and a half, check the chips. You'll notice that they've been burned a bit. So add some more. Usually do this two to three times. The smell of the smoke from the apple and all their mix of chips is just wonderful. Not great to breathe, but it sure smells nice. Replacing the chips two or three times is all that's really necessary. Let the smoker run all night. Check it about 8 to 9 o'clock the next morning. Remember to unplug your smoker once you take the fish inside. Now you can enjoy.